Hey everyone, my name is Dan. I'm uh, with Circle. Um, I've been uh, a successful grant writer now for uh, over seven years uh, for Circle. I support uh, a large number of community groups um, to get their applications in. And uh, today I just wanted to give you uh, some of my insights and uh, knowledge about the grant writing process, particularly uh, since we've had Deb Slater Lee today uh, and uh, State NRM. I'll run you through uh, the State NRM process a little bit as a uh, uh, as that's probably the most relevant for most of us at this point. Um, if I could get a screen share for the number one Excel now. This was um, a previous budget that I wanted, that I submitted, and I'll just get it up here, uh, minimize this a little bit, and I'll just show you. Um, Circle often sponsors a lot of numbered groups and have we have quite a lot of um, groups that we sponsor and support, and uh, State RAM have done a really a uh, wonderful job of making it easy uh, for us to sponsor multiple groups at once and, uh, and, and apply for multiple projects within a single application uh, through their large grant process, which has been really helpful. Um, some of the things I want to talk to you about today uh, with the budgets is um, as things that Deb's already actually kind of covered a little bit, uh, demonstrating value for money is, is really, really important. Um, your in-kind contributions uh, need to be relevant and need to be um, at, a, at a substantial level um, not necessarily always matching, but at least justifiably not or, uh, or close um, because um, a lot of the grants out there, they're not looking to just fund a project for it start to finish. They want to contribute to, to an objective um, and, and typically like these ones here are community stewardship grants. They want to contribute to community delivering outcomes. So they want to know that the community is contributing and that they're being supported um, by landholders and project partners uh, outside of just the funding body. So our in-kind contributions when we're applying for grants are really critical to identify, um, and, and we've got to value them appropriately. Uh, some groups will um, often undervalue their contributions, um, and uh, occasionally, sometimes, we can overvalue, uh, overvalue things or, or blow out things um, to try to cover it. But um, these things get uh, caught pretty quickly. They look fishy. Um, when you're writing an application. So it's really important to keep those things um, in check. Um, I want to emphasize, and Deb's probably emphasized this a bit as well, is how having really clearly identified um, uh, line items in your budget. Um, a little thing about budgets, there's no word limit in the budget. Um, and Deb might cringe when I say that, um, but it can be a double-edged sword. like. One, it's really important to stay succinct so that people can understand um, very easily what it is you're asking for, but you can also explain your project in more depth um, where, where, with a little bit more clarity um, in the budget as well, which will then, if you have a really clear, succinct um, line item, um, but they're not quite sure what that means, you can then explain it a little better where you couldn't necessarily put it into any of the questions or words. So um, to give you an example of that here in this budget here, um, You've got up here, you've got the activity name of the project um, and going down uh, when you're writing your budget, that activity name, um, community engagement and support, it's, it's pretty succinct and easy to understand. Um, I've just defined different projects up here, but weed control, very easy to understand. And these items here in the activities, um, for your best chance of success, should really relate um, back to the guidelines. So in the guidelines, like Deb said, it's really critical you read them. Um, they will give you the best tools for being successful in your grant application because they will actually outline in the guidelines their objectives for the grant. And if you can tie your activity to a direct objective in the guidelines, um, you you get your grant will be a lot more favorable to fund because they can see that you are matching their outcomes with your outcomes. So keeping those line items for um, in the activities really simple, weed control, vegetation monitoring, education and promotion, those are very clear things. They were directly out of the guidelines. Um, they can see that. And then you can go into your asks. And here I've got um, more, um, more detail what those activities are um, so that if it didn't make enough sense what the request was, they can go and see the, the details. But the, not necessarily, um, they might not necessarily need to go that far because they might understand that the, the asks are enough. So you've got more information if they need it, but it's simple enough that they don't necessarily need to go to it if they don't. And I hope that made sense in that, that sort of scenario. So this is an example of a very, very, very complicated budget um, that I had done on behalf of a number of um, projects here. 
Um, and uh, I tried to make the separations as clear as possible for, for um, everyone to view, um, as this one was actually supporting, uh, I think, 11 or 12 different projects. So I've colored them differently, tried to make it as clear and legible and understandable as I can, um, highlighting the, uh, the various um, things. And um, again, just keeping those key activities really simple, um, adding additional information where I needed to, um, but keeping it as clear and clean as possible, tying the objectives to the guidelines. Um, if we could go to uh, spreadsheet uh, one now, or two, sorry. Um, so here, um, this is an older, uh, from a, a few years as the previous one, but I just wanted to again show, um, this one's a lot simpler, it was a lot simpler application, it was just one project. Um, so it was a lot easier to explain, um, the words and the text gave me a lot more, but again, just describing the activities, revegetation, weed control, won't it? Very succinct, very easy. Um, and then you go into your planning. This demonstrates when you have um, the detailed like this, the line items across like this, it enables the funding body to look at it and say, oh, this is a well thought out project. He has all these steps, they have, we have all these steps lined out. What we're asking is very clear um, and it makes it very easy to assess it and say, yeah, this project's been thought through um, and, uh, and, and can, um, and they can have confidence in your ability to deliver it. You've got your different line items. It means that like, you've considered all the very different things that you've needed. So you've separated, you don't just have a one huge bucket for weed control because that might not tell them that they're getting value for money and you really need to demonstrate that. So you've got, you know, you, if you get your, car, your, your, your items costed out um, and then like how many times you're gonna do it and stuff, it makes it more um, <clears throat> easy to understand from the outside how much is being, um, uh, going where essentially. Um, where I, um, this is for before we use the WA volunteering calculation. So I, I put a little few notes in here where I got my figures for um, because I was worried that this, at this time of this grant, I was worried that that figure might be seen as an inflation. Um, so I demonstrated that that was the, uh, the total at the time from uh, volunteering WA and they now have that calculator um, and things come out quite differently. Um, but I also wanted to understand, like, uh, communicate, like, the, the contribution that the city of Melville had. So I had a few notes down here at the bottom, highlighted them, and left them there for a sign. Whether they um, used that or not when they assessed it, I'm not sure. But I thought it was a way to, again, um, try to explain a bit more about my project without having to use the word count in my word boxes, because um, sometimes those can be quite limiting. And the questions don't necessarily always um, apply to what you're trying to to demonstrate in your project. So just a, a, a kind of a tip and trick, if you will, um, to getting a bit more information for your viewers to hear. But yeah, once again, be careful that you're succinct because um, they'll get lost in the information. If we can go over to spreadsheet three. So I just wanted to show you a couple of things in budgets that um, were not um, perhaps so clear and uh, were, were not good uh, or unreasonable. So, um, this was an example that was uh, was provided um, to me, and I just wanted to go over some of the um, things that are really important to watch out for. Um, here, you've got a project uh, where the activities um, are maybe a bit um, too unclear. So, workshops. What kind of workshops are we talking about? Um, uh, as well, making these. Um, these these requests really 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 um, uh, relevant or sorry like proportionate to the the size of the project. So in this project, they're asking for twelve thousand uh, um, uh, dollars for a position, uh, and the project here um, may or may not merit um, that. If the project the total project was uh, only forty five thousand, and twenty five percent of that is going to project. Um, project coordination, it really needs to be cleanly justified and, and, and um, you might not get away with asking it. And as soon as you start asking for one thing that seems unreasonable, it, it, it brings the attention to the, the assessor and they go, well, if that's unreasonable, what else is unreasonable in the grant? Are they just trying to get away with more than more here? Like they, it, their spidey senses get tingling and they start looking for things to pick apart. Um, and, and that's not the position you want your grant. You want you want to look at it like funding bodies want to, to get their funds out um, and they really want to support community groups with good projects, good ideas and sound planning. Um, so you just got to demonstrate that you've got those things. Um, as soon as it looks a bit funny or hairy, they're going to start um, 
they're going to start coming down. Um, so, uh, weed control. Um, I just wanted to look at, so the in-kind contribution needs should be matching. Um, can we go to the next spreadsheet? Actually, I think that one was a bit of a better one to demonstrate. Um, maybe go to uh, spreadsheet five. So this one here, um, you can kind of see some of the troubles. I'll try to get it a bit more viewable here. Um, in this grant application, they've um, requested um, 56,000 um, from, from the state interim office. Um, they've only proposed 13,000 of in-kind towards it. Um, not only that, but when you come over to the activity name over here, and you go on ground work will include GPS location, species type, height. Um, in that budget there, they're looking at this and often assessors, I think they actually, they actually pull out the, the work plan first um, and they'll take that and they'll have a quick skim over that and then they'll look at the questions because without both information, the questions might not seem relevant and the budget or the, the work plan won't seem relevant. So they try to pull up, the, they often pull up the work plan first and then assess them together and try to pair them together with your questions. So if you've got a, a line item here that says on ground work will record GPS location, but they don't know what that on ground work is. You, you, it's not clear enough or succinct enough and it doesn't tie into their objectives necessarily. So you, again, going back to that, making sure that you apply um, your activity name to the guidelines and, and just have a really good understanding of those guidelines. The first thing I do when I write a grant actually is look at the guidelines. I bring up the guidelines, I have it next to me while I'm working and I'm making sure that everything that I'm writing is reflecting into that guideline. Um, so yeah, just making sure that you're really clear. Hopefully this will, um, when the, with the video, if you want to go back and review some of these budgets and see what, what made this um, difficult with, um, for assessors to assess is that one, the in-kind contribution didn't match. Um, two, the, the items of what they're trying to achieve in the work plan were really, are really quite vague. Um, and then things that the, the funding body um, don't necessarily want to pay for are in here as well. So accommodation, um, accommodation might be an important part of the project, but the funding body in nowhere in their guidelines or objectives are gonna to wanna to fund accommodation. So unless you can really justify it in your project, um, and this is something that I'll have a conversation with the funding body prior to hand, maybe that's a critical part, but when your project's already lacking in kind and stuff and you're asking for accommodation, I, I think you're gonna start wearing, uh, raising alarm bells. So just make sure again, like the line items are really, really, really relevant to what the guide, what the funding body wants to, um, wants to fund. Um, again, management a project on a weekly basis, that's all right, but what does that mean? What does that mean? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very difficult to have a sense what this budget was trying to do from, um, from this filing um, and where the in-kind contributions were coming from as well. So it made it feel, when I, when I looked at this budget, it basically meant, it basically felt like the, the project hadn't, um, hadn't been communicated or hadn't been thought through, it just wanted to be funded. Um, was looking for funding um, just for uh, to fill a, a budget gap or something and get a project across the line where there wasn't actually a lot of um, work being delivered by the, um, the the group involved or the landowners to support it essentially. Um, I might leave it at that for now. Um, but yeah, the key things I just wanted to, yeah, I'll just go over the key things for demonstrate your value for money. Um, make sure your requests are really reasonable. Uh, don't apply for heaps of management or, or administration money. Um, keep it within your guidelines. Uh, clearly define your client items and uh, make sure you link those funding requests to achieving outcomes highlighted in the guidelines.